My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. It's important to remember that the oxides from the elements of, on the left of the periodic table, that's lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium, are all basic. And uh, when they dissolve in water, they form alkaline solutions. In addition, the oxides from the right of the periodic table, that is sulfur, nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, those oxides are all acidic. So, as soon as you see this, within a few seconds you can say, acidic, acidic, basic. Therefore, the answer is simply A, one and two only. This is the same question, except it's phrased slightly differently. So, which one does not act as an acid? Well, the one that does not act as an acid must be the one that is either a base or alkaline in solution, and that is only MgO. Interestingly enough, they do put Al2O3. That is amphoteric. That can act both as a base as an ac and as an acid. But the only one that does not act as an acid is magnesium oxide. And all of those on the left side of the periodic table uh, those, uh, the oxides of lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium, they do not act as acids. The examiners like the word diprotic. They really ask a question with the word polyprotic or monoprotic, but they quite invariably ask questions with diprotic. And diprotic simply means that there are two hydrogens which are of the acidic type of hydrogen, which means, in this case, sulfuric acid. You're presumably expected to realize that this is monoprotic. It only has one acidic hydrogen. This is triprotic, or maybe polyprotic, with three acidic hydrogens. And this, again, is monoprotic. So the only diprotic acid in this list is H2SO4. The only other Diprotic acid you might come across is carbonic acid, H2CO3. This is another question where it is in principle so easy that you can do it within five seconds and it gives you all that extra time of one minute, 20 seconds for other questions. If you are lucky enough to get a question this easy, then go for A sodium hydroxide, which is the only one which is a strong base. This is clearly an acid, that's an alcohol, and that's a carboxylic acid. So this is the opposite of the previous one, and you're expected to know, you should know, that nitric acid is a strong acid. Uh, carbonic acid, that's a weak acid. Ethanoic acid, that's a weak acid. And this, of course, is Methanol, not an acid at all. Another question which I see as an easy one. Of these, the only one that is alkaline and therefore has a pH greater than 7 is sodium bicarbonate. As I've said before, oxide of sulfur, acid. Ethanoic acid, carboxylic acid. Silicon dioxide, well, as a solid, it doesn't really dissolve in water but it would be regarded as acidic. In this question, the examiner is asking you if you know that carbon dioxide is a weak acid, and therefore you must know that the pH value of weak acids is something like 5.6. Anything from 5 upwards towards 6.5, 6.8, would be regarded as a weak acid, and carbon dioxide is a weak acid. You are, would be expected to know that 2.1 refers to a strong acid, maybe a solution of hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or sulfuric acid, 
and 12.2 refers to a strong alkali, maybe a solution of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And 9.8 refers to probably also a strong alkali, but a more dilute solution of sodium hydroxide. So anything like 5.6, 6.5, those are weak acids, and carbon dioxide fits into that category. As soon as you're, you see the phrase definition of a bronsted lowry acid, you must remember that bronsted lowry refers to hydrogen ions. Is it a donor of hydrogen ions, in which case it's an acid? Is it an acceptor of hydrogen ions, or in which case it's a base? And so, bronsted lowry acid, a substance that acts as a hydrogen ion donor, just like sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, that is a bronsted lowry acid. B and D refer to Lewis acids and base theory. And a substance that acts as a lone pair acceptor is an acid. And a substance that acts as a lone pair donor is a base. So, a lone pair donor is basic for Lewis. And a hydrogen ion donor is acidic for Bronsted and Lowry. There are two ways of approaching this question. You could either look for the Lewis acid, and Lewis acid is a substance which will accept a lone pair of electrons. And that's clearly C, because BF3 plus ammonia plus ammonia uh, reacts together, and what happens is the lone pair of ammonia goes towards the empty orbitals within BF3. You may remember that boron has three electrons rounded from the periodic table, and when fluorine comes towards it, it forms six electrons like this. This is not the, the, the actual shape of it, it's more triangular and flat. But there are only six electrons around the boron atom in boron trifluoride. So there's a space here for two further electrons, and they come from the lone pair on the nitrogen. And this is known also as a dative covalent bond. Dative covalent bond. Essentially because the nitrogen is giving both electrons to the boron in this situation. And this is a Lewis acid. This is a Lewis acid. It is accepting a lone pair from another species. So this is the Lewis acid. The other way of looking at it is to look for the bronsted lowry acids and eliminate them. That is a bronsted lowry acid because it's donating a hydrogen ion. That is a bronsted lowry acid because it's donating a hydrogen ion. That is a bronsted lowry acid because it's donating a hydrogen atom. Therefore, these are not the ones that uh, the question is asking for. The question is asking for the one that's left out, which is BF3, because it is not a bronsted lowry acid, but it is a Lewis acid. So there we have it. This is another question which I see as very easy. Acids are proton donors, that is true. Acids dissociate to form hydrogen ions if they dissolve in water, that is true. Acids produce solutions with a pH greater than 7, no. You must know immediately that pH greater than 7 is not an acid, it's an alkali. Acids neutralize bases to form salts, that is true. The acid in, a bronsted, in the Bronsted-Lowry theory is a hydrogen donor. 
Therefore, when this donates hydrogen ion, the result would be HCO3 minus. HCO3 minus. That's the only one that fits. And the others just not reasonable. Okay, so any acid in the Bronson theory, theory will donate a hydrogen ion, and therefore what is left is the conjugate base. This is similar to the previous one. You have HPO4 2 minus, and they're saying this is an acid, therefore what is the base? The base must be PO4 3 minus since you take off the H plus, PO4, 3 minus. Again, a question which, if you practice these kind of things, they become easy. This is simply the reverse of the previous one. In the previous one, we were looking at the conjugate base, and the conjugate base had a negative charge. So, immediately see this one, D, because there is a negative charge there, and that would accept a hydrogen ion, a positive hydrogen ion. Therefore, that is the base to what would be CH4. If you saw CH4 as an acid, then this would be the conjugate base. In this question, the examiner is testing whether you understand the meaning of pH and whether you know its relationship to hydrogen ion concentration. Essentially, when hydrogen ion concentration increases, the pH decreases. That's the relationship. Secondly, as the units of pH decrease from, say, 5 to 4, or to 3 to 2, to one, etc. The concentration of hydrogen ion increases by a factor of ten. So this is the pH, and this would be the hydrogen ion concentration. It's increased by a factor of ten. 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 So those are the things you're you're being tested on. That as pH goes down, the hydrogen ion concentration goes up, or the reverse. As pH goes up, the hydrogen ion concentration goes down. And that as it goes down in units, from 5 to 4, 3 to 2, etc., the concentration of hydrogen ion changes by a factor of 10. What causes problems with students is that the concentration of hydrogen ion is usually in very small, and it usually empowers to minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, these negative powers, and that causes a problem. So if we look at uh, this one, we see that the power has gone from minus 3 to minus 2. So that's an increase in hydrogen ion concentration of 10, and therefore that's a fall in the pH of one unit. In this case, this has gone from 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, that's a decrease in hydrogen ion concentration, and so an increase in pH of one unit. Now, if you understand those two, you would immediately go to this one, where this is a fall in concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 4 to 1 times 10 to the minus 6, which is a fall in concentration of 100 times. And therefore, the increase in pH is 2 units. And that, that one is the biggest increase in pH in all of these four. The only other one... The important thing to remember about pH of solutions is that hydrogen ion concentrations change uh, in tenths or multiply by ten. So you can ignore A and B. So it's a matter of is X one tenth of that in Y or is X ten times that in Y? And you have to remember that the smaller the number, the greater the concentration of hydrogen ion. The hydrogen ion in X is ten times greater than that for hydrogen ion in Y. 
So there are two concepts to remember in this kind of question. The first is that pH change according to 10 times the concentration or a tenth of the concentration. And the second is that the smaller the number, the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions. Another question about pH. Do you realize that pH indicates the concentration of hydrogen ions? And as pH increases from 1 to 2, the concentration of hydrogen ions goes down. The concentration of hydrogen ions decreases. Also, do you realize that when the pH goes from 1 to 2, the concentration of hydrogen ions decreases to 1 tenth? In other words, the difference between the units of pH, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, are factors of 10 as far as the concentration of hydrogen ions are concerned. And the other important thing, it has nothing to do with whether the acid is strong or weak. And it really has nothing to do with the concentration of one acid versus the concentration of another acid. pH is purely about concentration of hydrogen ions. And therefore, in this case, the only two possible answers are C and D. D is not right, because the concentration of hydrogen ions, they say, is twice. That is not true. The concentration of hydrogen ions is ten times. And so the only, one, the only statement that must be true is this one, C. The concentration of hydrogen ions in A is higher than in B. When I see a solution of sodium hydroxide and I'm asked about pH, I immediately know that it's going to be a very high pH. It's going to be 12, 13, or 14. And in this case, they give you 14 in two particular cases. And I look at the color in the universal indicator solution and I say purple. That is sodium hydroxide. And then I check for the electrical conductivity. Good. That is clearly sodium hydroxide. You may wonder about C, where it says that the color and universal indicator solution is red. Red in both universal indicator solution and litmus is indicative of an acid. And sodium hydroxide is a base or an alkali. And therefore, this one, A, is the only possible answer. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.